Since I sold my old MIG ETX-70 last year, I have been looking for a new telescope that is light and compact enough so that I can take it with me when I'm traveling. After research and tons of hours comparing telescope specs and information online, I settled on what I believe is a great, affordable and lightweight travel telescope. I'm talking about the 4-inch Skymax Maxitov Cassegrain from Skywatcher. And in today's video, I'm going to review it. So let's get this started. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. If you are new to my channel, I like to talk about astronomy equipment. So if you're looking for this type of information, then hit that like button and subscribe. If you already like my videos, but haven't subscribed yet, then maybe consider doing so, so you don't miss out on new content. Skywatcher is a popular brand of telescopes and astronomical equipment in general. The company was founded in 1999 by its parent company, Sinta Technology Corporation of Taiwan. Sinta also does the manufacturing of all Skywatcher products in Songhu, China. Skywatcher stands for Quality Astronomical Equipment at Reasonable Prices, or so they claim. Over the years, I've owned a few of their products, starting with an 8-inch Dobson telescope, a couple of eyepieces, and now the Skymax, and at least in my opinion, their claim holds true. Quality-wise, they are on par with brands like Omegon or Celestron. However, price-wise, Skywatcher products tend to cost a bit more than products of those brands. But are they worth it? To answer this question, let's first take a look at the Skymax lineup. It includes telescopes of Maxdorf Cassegrain design, with sizes ranging from 90 mm or 3.5 inches all the way up to 180 mm and 7 inches aperture. There is also a pro version available for the aperture sizes of 5, 6 and 7 inches. These all come with a higher quality lenses made out of short optical glass, enabling a bit brighter views with better contrast. Every telescope comes with either a red dot finder for the smaller variants or a finder scope for the bigger models. Inside the box, there is also a 1.25 inch or 2 inch 90 degree mirror diagonal, depending on which model you get, and two eyepieces for medium and high power views. You can pair all these telescopes with standard but solid tripods that are operated manually, as well as with Wi Fi enabled go to mounts. Today, I have the 4 inch Skymax with me. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I was looking for a telescope that was light and compact enough so that I can take it with me whenever I'm traveling. I was looking for something a bit more powerful than my old mid ETX-70. The reason behind this is that I primarily want to use this telescope to observe planets. So it had to be either a Schmidt Cassegrain or a Maxutov Cassegrain telescope. Since the aperture size of the telescope didn't need to be large, but the image quality needed to be the best one possible, I went with a Mac. I will make a separate video in which I will explain in detail how a Maxutov Cassegrain telescope works and where the differences between this design and a Schmidt Cassegrain designs are. But for now, I'll just give you the short version. In front of the optical tube lies a highly curved spherical lens. Its job is to correct the light reaching the telescope and sending it to the primary mirror at the end of the optical tube. From there, light gets reflected back to the front of the telescope where it meets the secondary mirror. Actually, it's not a mirror, but uh, an aluminized small spot in the, on the inside of the corrector lens. The light then bounces back toward the primary mirror where it passes through a small hole in the middle of the mirror before exiting the back of the optical tube. From here, the used eyepiece or accessory takes over. 
Since the light bounces two times inside the optical tube, Schmidt and Maxutov Cassegrain telescopes have a very long focal length compared to the actual length of the optical tube. This is how the 4-inch SkyMax that I have here has a focal length of 1300 mm, whilst the length of the optical tube is only 240 mm. Since the aperture size is 102 mm, the resulting f number is 12.74. The 102 aperture size also allows for a maximum theoretical magnification of roughly 200x which is enough to spot the cloud bands on Jupiter or Saturn's rings with the Cassini division. The resolving capacity is 1.35 arc seconds. This tells you how far two points of light need to be apart in order for your eye to be able to distinguish them as separate sources of light when looking through this telescope. The 4-inch aperture size rises the limit value for magnitude to 11.8 and offers a light gathering capacity that is more than 210 times that of your naked eye. I recently was in Italy on holiday and was lucky enough to catch a few nights with very good seeing conditions. And of course I had the SkyMax with me and I got it tested thoroughly. I didn't know exactly what to expect from the views through this telescope. On one hand, I knew how the views through a small telescope like the mid ETX 70s were, but on the other hand, I also knew that the SkyMax has a wider aperture and a much longer focal length, which would allow for higher magnifications. Well, long story short, I wasn't disappointed. In fact, the SkyMax surprised me with bright, sharp and contrast rich views of the planets. Here, it worked very nicely together with my 9mm Delight eyepiece from Teleview. The resulting magnification of this combination was 144x. Even though the focuser doesn't have a 10 to 1 reducer, I was still able to find focus and obtain that sweet spot where my target was perfectly sharp. The build quality is good enough, with the tube and the back lid that holds the primary mirror being made out of metal. However, the ring at the front that holds the corrector lens is made out of plastic. And on the unit I received, there were glue residues all around the front ring that holds the corrector lens. And this was left behind by the manufacturing process. And these were only on the exterior of the optical tube. So it isn't a big deal, but still I, I wish they paid a bit more attention when applying the glue. Another aspect that I don't like is that the T2 threaded back end where you connect the accessory is very rough and has sharp edges. They could have sanded these a bit down. Other than these two negative aspects, the telescope is very well put together and gives a sturdy impression. In terms of accessories, the SkyMax comes with a plastic lid for the front lens, a red dot finder, a one and a quarter inch 90 degree mirror diagonal and two eyepieces, one with 25 mm and another one with 10 mm of focal length. Initially, I thought the red dot finder was going to be more or less useless because it's small and it has a very plastic feel to it but I have been proven wrong. It's a nice adjustable little helper for navigation and it's been growing on me ever since I've used it for the first time. It's far from being a premium device, but it works very well. The supplied mirror diagonal is fine. I mean, it does its job, but it's nothing spectacular. If you have quality eyepieces in your collection, then I would upgrade to a premium mirror diagonal like the Teleview Everbright series or a prism diagonal like the Zenith Prism from Bader. Otherwise, this supplied mirror diagonal is going to be the weakest link in your optical system. The two supplied eyepieces are nothing special, just run of the mill chip eyepieces that you should upgrade when you get the chance to. As mentioned earlier, at the back of the optical tube, there is a built-in T2 thread that enables a simple connection with different accessories, including DSLR adapters. This is a very handy feature. 
I ordered the Skymax together with the AZ Pronto mount, also from Skywatcher. It's a simple and lightweight alt azimuth mount with smooth manual controls. The height is easily adjustable and can be set at any value between 75 and 145 centimeters. The legs are made out of hollow aluminum tubes, whilst the head is made out of two solid cast aluminum pieces. Navigation is done using two flexible slow motion rods, one for vertical and one for horizontal smooth and fine motion control. These slow motion rods can be attached on either side so that all telescope types can be accommodated. To enable fast object tracking, there are also two large tightening screws, one for horizontal and one for vertical movement, that can be loosened so that the telescope can be moved freely on both axes by hand. The telescope attaches securely via a 45mm dovetail bar or vixen style bracket and is secured in place by a large thumb screw. The whole mount weighs just 3.5 kilograms and is rated for a maximum load of 3 kilograms. However, it is steady enough to easily support 4 or 5 kilograms telescopes as well. Now, in order to give you guys a better understanding of what different objects in the night sky might actually look like when viewed through this telescope, I simulated the views with Stellarium. A link to where you can download Stellarium for yourself is in the description below. Please keep in mind that these are simulated views and not actual views of the night sky. And now for the conclusion of this review. The 4-inch Skymax from Skywatcher surprised me with sharp, bright and contrast-rich views of the night sky. Especially planets and the moon looked great for a telescope this small. Thanks to its long focal length, uh, higher magnifications up to 200x can be achieved, provided the seeing conditions allow it, of course. This is more than enough for medium powered views of the night sky. Its compact size, low weight, make the 4-inch Skymax a fantastic travel telescope that you can take everywhere with you. Now that you have heard my opinion about the Skymax, I'm curious to find out what do you guys think about this lineup from Skywatcher? And do you guys have something like a travel telescope that you can take with you whenever you're traveling? Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. If you have questions or feedback, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Also, you can now follow me on Instagram and on Reddit. Links are on my channel page. All right, thank you for watching and catch you guys next time.